Hey guys, welcome to another episode in the deep playthrough of Grand Turismo 4. We are still doing, if I remember correctly, there was a day in between since the previous episode. We are still doing the license tests IB, I'm pretty sure. And we still have to do like, I think four or five. Where the hell is it? Here it is. Right, there's a slight slowdown in these menus. Don't mind it. Four tests we have to do. All right, Ford Focus RS 2002, tackling undulating S-bands. Pretty sure this is an FF car. Front engine, front wheel drive. El Capitan. The latter section of El Capitan is where we'll see how you fare through intense elevation changes. You'll be faced with a downhill right-hander. I'm now check, uh, wondering where it is actually on the track. I did uh, drive El Capitan quite uh, a few times already, but I have no idea where, where this section of the track is, like uh, by head, so to say. Um, you'll be faced with a downhill right-hander after the start. Think of this corner as a combination of two right-hand corners. After driving onto the first curbing, go back toward the outside of the track, keeping the steering constant, then drive over the second curbing. After taking the next left-hander flat out, you come upon a blind right-hander. Although you can't see through the corner, you'll need to slow down to slow the car down early to be able to make the turn. The road changes a bit on the exit, so be ready for understeer. Make the proper adjustments as the road surface changes is the key. Make the proper adjustment as the road surface changes is the key to getting good results here. All right, so the first right handers is basically one corner, then flat out through the other one, and then a blind right hander, which I don't really see on the, the map outline, to be honest. It seems to be a pretty after the, um, um, left corner, it's pretty much straight, and then there's a, a left hander, but it says that the right hander is. You'll come upon a blind right hander. I don't see a blind right hander, to be honest, but apparently it is, and there, there can be. We have to slow down early, and there can be some uh, uh, surface changes, and you have to prevent understeer by making uh, proper adjustments. Here we go. I really have to... Right, I was... Sorry, I was uh, my... All right, so this one is flat out. I was, uh, my force feedback uh, only kicked in very late, so I was distracted. Uh, and this is the blind right-hander, I guess. Yeah, but you can also, you can pretty much take it all flat out, I would say. Right, so this cannot be that hard. If by driving this bad, I already got the silver medal. You do have to slow down a bit over there. Fuck me. All right, but that's um, blind corner, which is a bit of a right-hander indeed. I think you can get through there. By only lifting, you don't need to break, I think. There it comes. I 
goddammit. I need to steer in earlier. Alright, this one went better. This one also pretty okay. And now I do a slight tap of the brakes. And now it's all about Maximizing exit speed here. I braked a little bit too much, but it should be pretty okay. Yes. Alright, that was a really easy one. <coughs> Let's check a quick replay. This is a pretty slow car, so you really uh, yeah, can take most of it flat out. These pretty wide winding corners. Over here I could have gotten, I think, on the gas earlier. Or lifted off a little bit less. But it was good enough. How much better were we? We had a 29.4, the time was 29.7, yeah. So it's a pretty lenient time because I think uh, there was still, I left time on the table for sure. All right, tackling corner sequences over undulating surfaces. We'll use El Capitan yet again. This time we'll run through a challenging hilly section. The key point here is the steep uphill climb after the tunnel. No, that's like a downhill after the tunnel, right? And at the top of the hill is the apex of a corner. So you'll need to start braking as you are still climbing and head for the curbing on the right side. After this, the downhill. After this is the downhill part. You'll lose a lot of grip, so be wary of understeer. And the exit for the following left-hander is tight. Finding the right place to get on the throttle is important here. All right, I first need to see where we are on the track. It says that there is an uphill section after... the tunnel. I'm pretty sure it will be downhill after the tunnel, not uphill. Ah, there's a, a little bit of uphill indeed. Alright, I just have to figure it out a bit. Alright, this time can be, I think, this one can be more tricky than the other one. that first corner I'm still going to try to take it flat out if I steer in yeah, again I need to steer in earlier I need to really drive over that left inside curve by the way for a big Mercedes that was a little bit too much um, V8 or whatever this is pretty bad sound I don't want to... Here, this is what I mean. You can't take it flat out. And there you just need to get way earlier 
on the um, also steering way earlier in the downhill section. You really need to hug the um, rock wall, I would say. Totally screw that one up, but it's just training. Right, too much braking over there. Right. <laughs> Pretty weird that I didn't get disqualified there, but I'm not even hitting the gold, the silver time. So I'm doing something totally wrong here. Now I probably my thing is. Um, Uh, that's what I mean. You don't really need to break there. You need to... Um, downhill section, you only need to lift a bit. But it's quite tricky because... Uh, you have a lot less grip going downhill. Let's see what we need for gold. 36.7 gold holy shit half a second less four tenths a pretty tricky one This is the most important corner. Same time, get it. I think I also indeed left too much on the table. I break too much in that right hander. Fuck me. Annoying understeer going downhill. Nice. All right. I thought I over over braked a bit, especially in that uh, right hander uh, downhill after the tunnel. But yeah, it was good enough apparently. Pretty nice. That went much quicker than I expected. So this is all full throttle. You can also take this first left-hander full throttle. You just have to steer in over the curb, towards the curb. And then over here, brake a bit early. Lift off and here you can get on the gas. It's all about steering in early in all these corners. 
really stay sharp to the uh, inside curving. Over here, this felt super messy. Apparently it was good enough. And then over here also a slight tap of the brakes because otherwise you can go uh, wide. Into the barrier. I'm pretty happy with that one. So only two more to go. Ah, now we will be doing, I think, City the Area. I'm really looking forward to uh, a full test over there. IB15, one lap guide runs Citta di Aria. Time for the pace car again. Follow it for a lap around the Italian street course. The entire track is very narrow, so if you don't take the perfect line, your lap times won't be impressive. Follow the pace car closely and learn the line and where to break. There's a difficult hairpin corner here. The corner is deep with a late apex. Don't get impatient and dive into Dive in too early. Gradually, gradually get to the inside is the way to go. All right, I think that is like the second hairpin to the right on the little map icon. <coughs> also, let's check the uh, map. So we go straight and then there was an earlier test also with that first little kink that is like super narrow. It's not that hard, but you really have to find a rhythm there. I think you can uh, lose or gain a lot of time there. Then you have that uh, hairpin that they're talking about with a very late apex. Then afterwards a left-hander and then a long flowing right-hander. A straight, then again a bit of um, a chicane almost it looks like. The middle section in the bottom half of the uh, map layout. Then after that twisty section again a straight right, left, and then another uh, hairpin, and then basically a long straight towards start finish with a uh, flowing chicane just before start finish, or something like that. Let's see how we will fare. We're driving an old little uh, Alfa Romeo, I think, pretty uh, suitable. Just, I need to find out also the, um, the car characteristics. Like the um, shift moments, etc. This really is one of my favorite tracks, I must say. Ah, remember this one, even if you're in, oh shit. Pretty easy to uh, let the car spin out. I remember if you do this in a much faster car, that corner where I spun out. You can really uh, yeah, drift through it, so to say. It's a pretty exhilarating corner. You can very easily fail, but you can also take it if it goes well, you can take it quite quickly. And this car really is easy to uh, unsettle. difficult section is coming up. Oh shit! Totally missed it, but this is the difficult section. You really need to get the flow through here. Especially in this car where it's so easy to oversteer and get the car to spin out. Right, now we're getting to that. Oh, no. I wanted to say that late apex hairpin, but that's only over here.
Right, and there was also a bit of a... twisty section here, so that we just passed. And here, start, finish. Alright, we need to do much better, I think. Let's see what we need to get. We had a 219. Holy shit, we need a 211. Eight and a half seconds faster. That's a lot. I mean, it was not a good lap on my side, but eight and a half is quite a lot. Also, with this annoying wheel spin at the start, I think you can lose quite some there already. Because there's such a big straight immediately. Right, but this is why I love Gran Turismo that are the levels like these so I must not get frustrated it's a challenge that counts which modern games lack totally or at least much more I didn't play Elden Ring yet so cannot comment on that one alright I think I way too much braked over there still have to get to grips with the, um, the track layout I saw the curbing and I was, uh, I saw it too late. Alright, this is such a bad start. I hate that. That one seems to be a bit better. It's so annoying that wheel spin at the start. God damn it, this again, the car just wanting to spin out, it's so annoying. Really, too happy car. And again, car tries to slide out from the rear. Way too slow I took that, uh, I think. All right, 
right, I didn't need to break there. I took the hairpin way too slow. This whole letter half is super bad. But it should be better than the uh, earlier attempt. No, yeah, only two seconds better. I think we need to get a 2.11, right? Was it 2.11 or 2.10? 2.11. Right, but it is a nice challenge. I really uh, enjoyed this one. Also, all the crowds left and right. Modern GT games do not have levels like these anymore, which is a shame. I should have, remember, brake a bit more because otherwise you don't make that. You don't make that next corner there. go that bad, went pretty okay even. It's just so hard to keep this car from sliding all over the place. sure whether I shifted up too early. Over here also way too much braking. Alright, but we did at least get some progression again, two seconds off approximately. We need five and a half seconds. couple of places where you really can gain some time. The only problem is it takes two minutes of driving before you get there. So in the last section Yeah, you don't see it that often because you first have to do this whole section over here. But yeah, practice makes perfect, I hope. It's also in this car. Really about not making too many sudden Fuck me, I wanted to put it to third. Instead I shifted down. Uh, but it's not making too many sudden movements, uh, steering inputs. Especially over here where the car really is happy to slide around. All 
Right, and I'm going to keep more pace through this first kink here and also the second one. I think I'm losing here, this one. At least that first one you can take that out, I guess. Alright, 4.6 seconds, no, 3.6 seconds needed. That went pretty okay. This went bad. Not as smooth as before. Man, it's a really straightforward track but it still has quite some I would say variation in it Way too wide, so annoying. I unsettled the car by lifting off in that first corner and I didn't have a good positioning for the second one. Right, this really is pretty tricky. Three seconds is a lot. That really means I'm breaking somewhere way too much like over there was also not fluent Right, that went pretty okay. You really have to find your flow through that section. Too much breaking over here.
right. And this last section, I'm still not sure how to tackle. Yeah, I think you don't need to break as much in that last corner. Ah, look at this. This is what I mean. Only one second of the goal time. Nice. Now the tricky section. Nope, did not go as well as previously. That last corner is really important, I think. Last two corners. Nice! Woohoo! Alright, well, the middle section um, even didn't go that well, but... Apparently, indeed, that last two corners where I break way too much, you can just, you only need to lift there. It's not really uh, breaking necessary. So you can carry much more speed through it than I did in the start. All right. Really, this really is nostalgia for me, this level. For this track, also a pretty cool car, little Alfa Romeo. I do think there's also a test here, or maybe that's one of the mission events in a Subaru in Pretza. It's a really tough time. I remember playing this over and over again. It's either a Mitsubishi Lens or a Subaru in Pretza, I think. But in this little car, it really was a good um, way to get somewhat familiar with the track again after almost 20 years.
beach uh, or something. It's set on the uh, on the pavement. I think that means something like. Let's see. Maybe we see it over here now as well. God loves you or something. If we do like so. Yeah, Dio Lo. It's uh, just like over here. Quickly see, I was just, I, I like languages quite a bit. So I cannot really skip there in one go, so we have to do it via fast forward. We're almost there, it's not that long of a uh, track. Here we go. Hmm. Now it didn't show that anymore, the ground texture. That's a little bit weird. I forgot from what angle I saw it. Anyways, it says something like Dio lo beneficia, and I think that means something like Dio God lo or do you beneficia is is willing or is favorable, loves you, something like that. Anyways, um, I'm really overthinking a really minor thing. Sorry for that. Um, I think this is the last test graduation tests in order to get the international b class racing license you'll need to tackle a challenging portion of italy street course that you've just seen you'll be timed from the back straights to the point where you exit the hairpin after starting on the straight at high speed use the gates at the bottom of the hill as a braking point the road will flatten here you can also use this as a guide point after the gates, which gate? Um, where are we? Are we at the start or at the uh, second hairpin? You'll be timed from the back straights to the point where you exit the hairpin. Ah, so it's the back straight, all right. After starting on the straight at high speed, use the gate at the bottom of the hill as a breaking point. The road will flatten here. You can also use this as a guide point. After the gate, there is a right, left S curve. Yeah, right. Yes, true. Keep your speed in check here. Then you'll approach a right-hander. Stay on the outside, then go to the inside at the end of the curve. All right, this doesn't look to be that difficult, but probably the timing is crazy. I mean, looks to be simpler than why does it say use the gates as a brake marker what gate are they talking about what the hell what a terrible description what am i missing here You'll be timed from the back straight. After starting on the straight at high speed, use the gate at the bottom of the hill as a breaking point. I'm looking at that gate that is um, at the end of the straight, like a crossing, like this arch. But maybe they mean that metallic grating to the left. Like here. No, but that's also way too late. So what? Fucking gate, do they mean? I have no idea. Here, and that banner, GT4 banner, is way too soon. I'm going with. little house like over here fucking hell 
the pavements, unsettles the car, or that curbstone. the other super <laughs> super annoying curb sound I don't understand why they say get on the insides of that hairpin it's it's not like the car wants to do that. It's understeering like hell there. It's not like you can make the corner your... That's doable. Man, this is an annoying hairpin. I'm, I'm, I hope we can still do it this episode. Get this license over with. Oh man, fuck this corner so hard. Oh fuck it, so hard. What I, what I mean, you can break a lot in that hairpin, but then it really feels like you're losing so much time. But if you don't do that, Don't do that, then you go white into that hairpin. I think that first section is crucial. Nice. B license so now we can do two professional events where we need uh, that requires an ID license and we get a bonus car I assume this is also a pretty cool car by the way wouldn't mind driving that one in real life an old Lotus Esprit Such a cool um, level or track this. I always say level. 
have the feeling that I'm still doing the Hitman playthrough with all the levels, but nope, we are in a racing game with tracks, not levels. Um, all right, so overall, was it that hard? No, the only thing, uh, the IB license, I'm sure IA will be much harder in the S license. The only one that I found incredibly annoying was the, um, the cone slalom. Found that pretty infuriating. Took me a whole episode to do that. Nike 1 2022. I already have that one, right? Ah, we get another one. RX8 concept. Come on. Man, this is a pretty, um, those uh, fenders are pretty low res, I must say. All right, can we get a cool car? Ah, this one is pretty cool. Here, these fenders are much sharper, like um, covering the wheels, um, the wheel well, so to say. In that RX-8, it was incredibly, um, Blocky. Anyways, I can tell you from uh, the looking back, it were these two which were infuriating. Especially once I finally got through here, I was like, okay, finally I did it. And then you go here where you have to do it basically again, but without um, uh, active stability management. So that's really like an anti-climax. Like uh, you're like, woohoo, finally done. And then next test, exactly the same, but a little bit harder. Um, can you, let's quickly see what the tests are here. Complex corners. Complex corners. Why doesn't it show the Uh, the track. I'm just curious. Uh, maybe I should leave it. I'm spoiling it now for myself. And also going into all these menus is a bit much. Midfield raceway. Uh, okay, I will just leave the track locations. But yeah, this is just cornering. Cornering. And then we have chicanes. Chicanes one and two. In a Skyline, an FPV GT. All right, never heard of that one. Alfa Romeo Spider is this one. And this is the XJ220, pretty cool car, very cool car. All right, then we have uh, a guide run in El Capitan. It should be pretty doable. Complex Corners 3 in the S2000. Then we have uh, in the rough CTR, nice. Uh, Complex Corners 4. Then we have City Street Challenge 3 in an Alpha 156. And then the coffee break, Gymkhana. Oh man, again, cones. Uh, this one I'm really not looking forward to. These cones. Although in IB, the coffee break cones was quite simple, but check out this layout. But let's uh, worry about that later. Maybe the time is very lenient. I don't know. So that's the coffee break. Then we will have uh, Citroën Xara, one of the ugliest cars ever make, made, I find. City Street Challenge 4. One lap guide run Fuji Speedway in a Toyota Caldina. Should not be that hard. Dirt racing. All right, this is where I'm also uh, getting a bit anxious. This can be very tricky. Um, Mitsubishi Pajero Driving on snow, this is also super tricky I don't really uh, enjoy it At least the IB snow challenge really took me a lot of attempts Here we again have complex corners number 5 In a very cool car M5 V10 M5 then we will be doing Complex Corners 6 in the TVR tomorrow. Then we have a uh, one lap guide run in the Nürburgring North Course. 
I know the Nürburgring quite well from a GT7 uh, circuit experience that I did. So that should help. I'm not too worried about that. And then we have the Nissan R92 graduation test. But what do we need to do here? I don't know. I heard um, nightmare stories about one of the Le Mans prototype cars on Le Mans as a test, which apparently is super hard. But yeah, maybe that's this one, or maybe that's later on the, in the S license. But yeah, it looks all, it's basically mostly complex cornering. And uh, yeah, I do like those tests. But before doing that, let's quickly clean up the garage of crappy cars. Ah, this is not a Nike car. I had this one. I thought I already had a Nike car, but it's a quite similar car, but it's not the same. Um, yeah, so let's just keep this one for fun. Maybe in 2004, they really thought that in 2022 cars would be like this. Boy, were they wrong. Um, this one, was this a concept car in the at the time? I don't know. But I probably will not get any money for it. No, let's just discard it. Cluttering up my garage. And this one I do like to keep. Cool old cars. Just, it's not even that expensive. Can we sell the night car? I don't think so. It's a concept car. No. Alright, so then in the next episodes we are doing two professional events being World Classics up to 1970. Standard or sports tires required. I'm such an idiot. Alright, do I have a car? An older car. Why isn't there not production year here? I don't understand. It's so weird. You have everything you can sort on, except production year, which is a relevant factor to be able to sort on, I would say. Um, unless I overlooked it, but I didn't see it. So, up to 70 it said, right? So even this Auto Bianchi is not eligible. I thought this was a pretty classic car, but nope. All right, so we have the uh, Honda S500, but yeah, I will not win any races in this one, I'm afraid. We have Skyline 2000 GT. This is one I would like to use just for fun. I'm pretty sure we will not win in standard form. And then what else do we have? Ah, this one. I'm going to take this one, the Ginetta. It has less horsepower than the uh, again wrong button in the Skyline. But the Skyline. Why isn't there no weight here? Thousand ninety-five. Let's assume that the Ginetta is lighter. So the other one was one twenty-five HP, wasn't it? One twenty-three. Yeah, here it says one twenty-three. Here it says one twenty-five. I don't understand. Uh, anywho. 1,025 or so it said. 450 k <laughs> I was expecting it to be lighter, but this light? Holy shit, so I think that's per um, power per weight ratio is better in this one than in the... Uh, in the Skyline GT. 2000 GT. 
This one was 1095 even. Can do a very quick um, calculation. So we do 125 divided by 1095 is point 11 horsepower per kilogram. And this one is Divided by four fifty four nineteen point nineteen um, HP per kilogram of weight. So it's not really uh, double, but it's very close to double the um, power to weight ratio. So for sure, this is the car. That I want to drive. It also looks like a super epic car to drive. Um, but that will be in the next episode, guys. Over there. And over here. Is what we will be doing. Oh, it's also a real championship, actually. So if you fail like over here, you have to start over. Let's first do very quickly a test uh, run because it could be that I'm totally not uh, competitive. I really have to stop the episode. We're already way over the 45 minute marker. Oh shit, there's an AC Cobra. I will never win. Although it only says 10 point race. So the game is convinced I should be able to win it. I will never win it against the AC Cobra. Check it out. This is crazy. And to be honest, this car may be light. All right, this is it. <laughs> That AC Cobra is already out of sight. So I do have a little bit of a problem. Um, we can either tune the car, but I only have 22K. But 22K is probably also too little to buy. A cool car. I mean, an AC Cobra will not be cheap. Where is the US? Here is the US. Is AC not its own brand? I don't even know where to look for. AC Cobra. It's a Chevrolet. No, these are Corvettes. Alright, maybe the AC Cobra is only a car that you can win or something. Ah, here we go, we can go to the right. Still, I don't see anything AC Cobra related. Here we go. Five hundred thirty K, are you kidding me? Yeah, so I'm in a little bit of a problem uh, with that championship. 
What I could do is start over and hope that the AC Cobra is not on the grids. I mean, it's a bit random. That is an option. But yeah, let's uh, cross that bridge, worry about that one in the next episode. Guys, hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you there. And for the meantime, don't forget, always do keep on gaming. Later.